Welcome back everyone to Millennial Finance. In this video, we will be going over the shocking prediction Michael Burry has on the stock market. Make sure to watch this video in its entirety to better understand how you can hedge your portfolio like Burry to prevent you from losing a lot of money. If you ever learned about finance, then you've heard of Michael Burry. He's the guy that's made billions not once, not twice, but three times. Talk about timing the market. One of his predictions was so mainstream that they made a movie about it called The Big Short. After predicting the dot-com bubble and the 2008 recession and the most recent market correction. It's safe to say that Michael Burry knows a thing or two about predicting market crashes. The market has already dropped significantly, but Burry believes that this is the beginning of the end. Burry still sees the market crashing over 50% more from the current levels. A lot of investors call Michael Burry a broken clock because he makes the majority of his money from market crashes. Timing the market is notoriously difficult, and Burry is not immune to that. He's been early to every prediction he's made, but he's also been right at the end. Burry recently tweeted, habitually be one to two years early on literally everything, and you too can attain broken clock status. Burry first made his market crash prediction in late 2021. While it's been a while since then, the situation has played out exactly as he predicted. What did he predict? Well, you see, Burry foresaw accelerated inflation, a crash in growth stocks, an overall market correction, and a crash in bond prices. Burry is always early, but he always seems to end up right no matter what happens. One key reason why Burry has a difficult time predicting market crashes is because of how unpredictable human nature is. While technology has evolved, human behavior has never changed, and history shows that. Michael Burry tweets a graph to show his point. In this tweet, he says, third time's a charm, 10 years leading to a financial crisis, yellow S&P 500 2000, white S&P 500 today, green Dow 1929, got to love human nature, nothing if not consistent. What does this mean, you ask? The yellow line represents the speculation during the dot-com bubble. The green line resembles the roaring 20s before the Great Depression. Both of these periods included unprecedented levels of financial risk that ultimately led to a sharp downfall. In the dot-com bubble, we saw unprofitable internet stock rally 1000 or even 2,000% before crashing to zero. The Roaring Twenties also had ridiculous levels of speculation. Stock prices quadrupled within a span of nine years, and most investors were convinced that prices would continue to rise. Burry tweeted a newspaper showing how ridiculous speculation was during that time. The headline explained how even though the market went down for the day, a rally at the market closed cheered brokers. Sort of like today. Both of these bull runs pointed toward one behavior, which is greed. The same greed and behavior occurred in 2020 and 2021. While the market rebound in the short term, Burry sees the market crashing over a one or two year span. After 2000, the Nasdaq had 16 bear market rallies above 10%, averaging 22.7% before bottoming down 78%. After 1929, the Dow had 10 bear market rallies over 10%, averaging 22.8% before bottoming down 89%. You're probably asking, what is Burry trying to say? Burry is essentially saying, that the market will undergo short-term rallies, but you shouldn't take that as a signal of long-term recovery. He further explained his prediction by saying that dead cat bounces are the most epic. 12 of the top 20 Nasdaq one-day rallies happened during the 78% drop from 2000's top. 9 of the top 20 S&P 500 one-day rallies happened during the 86% drop from the 1929 top. This tweet brings out an intriguing and deceiving correlation. The market always rallies the most during long-term market Market crashes, which is extremely misleading. Burry has pointed out a lot of correlations, but we all know that correlation does not equal causation. Michael Burry has spotted some frightening fundamentals that are backing up his prediction. Everyone knows that the macroeconomic situation is horrifying. Some economists will tell you that the Ukraine Russia's situation is on the brink of collapse. Others will tell you that China's economy is weak or U.S. interest rates are going to continue increasing. All of these macro situations may be true, but there's only one factor that will ultimately crash the economy, the consumer. The economy is practically purely driven by the consumer. Almost 70% of the U.S. GDP is just on personal consumption expenditures. If the consumer feels weak at any point, the entire economy will fall apart. The current macro issue centers around the low 
lowering purchasing power of the consumer. If we all stop consuming as much and start saving, the economy is going to crash. Burry said that this is the problem. Last 18 months, minus $850 billion in direct stem checks, $400 billion in cash out riffies, $1 trillion plus in forgivable loans with $250 to $500 billion of it fraudulent, another $4 trillion in direct. What recapitalizes the consumer now? Higher wages can't do that. The economy is experiencing immense price increases, and consumers like yourself are feeling that your money is worth substantially less. This lowering purchasing power is not just anecdotal. There is a vast array of data showing that the consumers are the weakest they've ever been. The most famous tracker of consumer behavior is the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. The U Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index is currently reaching record lows, which is clearly showing us that consumers feel weak. Another signal of the weakening consumer is the slowdown in Amazon's revenue. Amazon's first quarter results were horrendous with revenue only growing 7% year over year and earnings missing by a substantial amount. The technological age has seen Amazon become the primary marketplace where most consumers purchase their goods. Amazon's poor quarterly result shows that the consumers are in an incredibly weak situation. Murray tweeted, and so Amazon says to GDP, there's your weakening consumer. So given all of this information, how how has Burry made millions? And how can investors do the same? Burry believes that the first economic impact of weakening consumers will be lowered profit margins. This will be spearheaded by the struggle for businesses to maintain prices high. Consumers are feeling weaker than ever, and this will force businesses to lower prices. The issue with this is that wages do not fluctuate frequently, so wages will remain elevated relative to prices. Because businesses will have to lower prices while still paying higher wages, their profit margins will fall substantially. This will ultimately cause stocks to trade at lower price to sales ratios after a significant decrease in sales. Burry's preparing his portfolio to make millions, if not billions of dollars in the next year by shorting bonds. He revealed in late 2021 that he was shorting 30-year treasury bonds in particular. He tweeted, for what it's worth, I've never shorted any cryptocurrency. This is my third bubble and the biggest. I've learned a thing or two. 30-year treasuries on the other hand. The reason for Burry to short bonds is quite obvious. Inflation was accelerating to almost 7% while 30-year bond yields were still roughly at 2%. This meant that bond investors were basically guaranteed to lose 5% per year in the short term. Bond yields and bond prices are inversely correlated, so as bond yields increased, bond prices crashed. One ETF that Burry has purchased before is TBT, which is the ProShares Ultra Short 20-plus Year Treasury ETF. TBT is an ETF that short sells a bundle of bonds. Bond yields have increased drastically over the past few months due to increasing interest rates, inflation, and the Ukraine situation. This has caused bond prices to crash and for TBT to rally. The TBT ETF has increased by over 43% since Burry first revealed a short position. That is already a substantial amount, but Burry sees himself making even more in the future. Burry recently tweeted, 1977 says hello with a picture of himself in 1977. This was in reference to the economic situation in the 1970s. The period of the 1970s is known as the Great Inflation with inflation reaching unprecedented levels. The inflation rate in 1977 was at 6.5% before accelerating to over 14% by 1980. This is very similar to our situation. Inflation is currently at roughly 8% but Burry sees it passing 10 and maybe even 15%. The truth may actually be that inflation is already past 10%. Burry is skeptical of the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, that is used to calculate inflation. He explained how the CPI says housing cost rose 5% in the last 12 months. Wrong. CPI would be 12% using real-world NAR housing data. BLS has smoothed out housing numbers forever because home prices have been a problem forever. So next month they will start smoothing out vehicle prices. Problem solved. Burry is essentially saying that the housing prices that the CPI uses are off by a large sum. The number that the CPI uses claims that housing prices only rose by 5% in the past year. This is definitely not true. If the calculation for home prices included real-world housing data, then CPI inflation would be at 12%. That means that the current inflation rate of 8% is off by 4%. This miscalculation and other macro factors will cause the market to crash by an estimated amount of roughly 55% from the current price levels. Burry explained how there were paradigm shifts 
Speculative peaks, the S&P 500 bottom 13% lower than 2002's bottom in 2009, 17% lower than 1998's long-term capital management crisis low in 2002, and 10% lower than 1970's low in 1975, 15% lower than the COVID low as SPX 1862, roughly Schiller P to E of 16, nominal P to E of 9. In historic range, Michael Burry is pointing out a pattern of market crashes becoming worse and worse as time goes on. If we assume that this pattern continues, then the S&P will crash to a level that is marginally lower than the COVID crash. Burry uses 15% as an example here to see if this would be reasonable in theory. If the S&P were to crash to a level that is 15% lower than the previous low during COVID, then the index would be at roughly 18.0 points. That is roughly 55% lower than the current levels and would bring the index back to historical price levels. One of the graphs that Burry attached to his tweet shows the Schiller P to E ratio over time. The Schiller P to E ratio is a cyclically adjusted P to E ratio, which means that it adjusts the P to E ratio for inflation. We are currently at a Schiller P to E ratio of 36. A 55% crash would bring this ratio down to roughly 16, which is in line with the historical average. Burry also attached a graph showing the historical average for the nominal P to E ratio, which is just the price to earnings ratio for the past 12 months. We are currently at a P to E ratio of 21. A 55% crash would bring this down to about 9. A P to E of 9 would be slightly lower than the average which Burry believes is reasonable. All of this points to his prediction that the pain has not ended yet. Some of you think that short-term crashes aren't relevant if you're holding stocks for the long term. This is completely true if you're able to handle the psychological pain of your portfolio dropping substantially. Great companies always experience short-term crashes and long-term gains. One example of this is Amazon during the dot-com bubble. Burry questioned, how far can the stock of a good growing company fall, one destined to be one of the greatest companies in the world? Remember when Amazon fell 95%, but the Fed, but the Fed didn't have inflation like things hanging over its head then either. If you aren't prepared to maintain conviction in the stock that drops something over 95%, then perhaps the stock market is not for you. Short-term volatility affects all investors emotionally, and controlling this emotion is extremely difficult. Speaking Speaking of volatility, there's another signal pointing towards a further crash which is trading volume. Trading volume tends to be higher during market crashes because there is more activity from buyers on both the buy and sell side. The current trading volume to shares outstanding is at unprecedented lows. Burry detailed how top to bottom, Microsoft traded 5.2 times its shares outstanding by 2002, 3.3 times by 2009 and 0.5 times so far. Amazon traded 5.7 times by 2002, 6.6 by 2009, and 0.9 times so far. JP Morgan traded three times by 2002, 5.9 times by 2009, and about 0.7 times so far. Enough takes time. Trading volume still has to increase by five to 10 times from its current levels in order for the market to be similar to previous crashes. This is because the market tends to have a higher trading volume when prices are lower. In order to be in line with previous market crashes, the trading volume would still need to increase significantly. Keep in mind that Michael Burry is not a financial advisor. He is simply a hedge fund manager who would profit significantly if the market crashed. You should always do your own due diligence and invest at your own risk. That being said, I would not push aside Burry's predictions especially given his track record. The traditional financial system never listens to him which is why he recently tweeted, at least I tried. Let me know if you think the Big Short 2 is coming soon after Burry makes billions once again.